guys, welcome back to another installment of Hair Tube. I'm here today with Bella. Hey Bella, hey. how are you? Good, That's good, nice to meet you. Um, I'm going to cut Bella's hair today. We had a little bit of a chat off camera about what we'd like to do. Um, and we're talking about keeping it strong and blunt. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you guys how I um, do a, a bob cut using a pair of clippers. So what we're going to do is we're going to prep her hair, um, straighten it, and then we're going to come through with a pair of clippers and just cut it off nice and blunt. She's asked me just to make sure her fringe is balanced. It's already been cut recently, so we might just Make sure it's straight and balanced on both sides and then add a little bit of texture there so that when it grows out, it grows out nice and soft. We're also going to go and do some colour. So we're using the um, Colour Sync product today just to tone the hair out a little bit. We just found if I can spin around. It's just a little bit brassy. Um, it just looks like it's faded. So we don't want it to be super dark, but we just want it to look like it's fresh and glossy and shiny because I think that sometimes if you're going to do something that's minimal in terms of you know, two straight lines, one here and one here for the haircut. Colour can really make the difference, so we're going to do that. Um, and then hopefully you love it. Yeah. And we're going to cut it with clippers, which is really, really fun. I do it often. So excited. Awesome. very excited. Alright, so we're off to have some colour, and we'll see you when we're back. Um, we're going to do the haircut. <laughs> Back from the basin, um, so quick recap on what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to do a dry cut, we're using clippers, so I'm going to flat brush the hair. The reason why we do this is um, we need to dry the hair at natural fall and not over manipulate it. So um, when Bella does her hair, it's literally wash and wear and it'll go into place. If we dry the hair straight, if we iron it straight and then cut it, if that's not replicated the next time Bella does her hair, more than likely it's not going to sit right. So I'm going to use a flat brush, my hair dryer, I'm just going to dry it off. Um, and then once that's done, you'll see us back and we'll start the haircut. We flat brush the hair nice and dry. And that's probably a good example of what happens when you, you don't um, cut the hair in natural four. You can see that little bit of hair from the last haircuts poking out there. I'm gonna section this off. Um, as explained in previous videos, we comb the hair to the side and where it wants to round back. That's where we section it from. So first we we'll do it here. It's very important to just check to make sure we're square. Straight. I use, uh, I'm using a Panasonic clipper. I really like this clipper. Chin down just a little bit, gorgeous. Thank you. You can see we're working with the natural movement. I'm not trying to manipulate the hair at all. I'm not going to do the sides, I'm going to leave these out till we get round there. If you do what I just did then and you put a kink in the hair like that, you need to stop, grab your hair dryer. You need to make sure you pull that movement out. And again, I'm just going to stop and leave that corner. You can see it's starting to kick to the side and that's exactly what we want. 
You can clean the graduation out that you create by holding it in your comb as you go along if you really want to, but um, you can also wait until the end of the haircut. Again, just gonna pull that movement back out. Really important we don't put root lift in the hair. When I'm holding it, I'm using the wide end of the comb. I don't want to put unnecessary tension on the hair because then we're going to get pressure graduation. So I'll put my chair down a little bit. Just using the fine end of my comb now, but you can see I'm stopping a couple of centimeters before the ends because I don't want to have tension on that top hair. I'm just trying to squeeze that short hair underneath just so I can get that um, little bit of graduation out. Um, chin down for me, gorgeous. Perfect. Now we can come in if we like. And then I use the actual spine of my comb just to hold it. And we're just gonna nick those pieces from underneath now. Bella's not going to walk through life with her head down like this, so you don't have to be too concerned with these hairs underneath, but you have to make sure that you clean them up a little bit because otherwise when it grows in eight weeks' time, they could actually come down a little bit further. And we don't want them to poke out. Just make sure you don't hit the hair on top because you'll put a hole in your, in your baseline.
this way a little bit. Perfect. Again, make sure you don't squeeze it over the ear. Very important. And head normal for me. I'll spin you around. And head to the side. Yep, perfect. I'll just come this way. Just need to come back on this angle. And straighten the mirror for me. Spin you around. Yep, you can let it go. Perfect. So I put the fringe guard on there, it's just to protect the face from hair. I also use these if I'm cutting fringes that are close to eyebrows, because we don't want to cut people's eyebrows. Um, however, this is um, much shorter than the eyebrow length. However, I'm using it because I'm actually going to push the clipper against the forehead and um, it's been a long, long time since it's happened, but I actually have done that and sort of scratched. I haven't cut someone's head, but I've scratched it. So um, whether I'm using a scissor running against the forehead to keep it sharp or a pair of clippers, um, I like to use a bang. If you could just look up for me just a little bit. There's this little bit of hair there that doesn't belong anywhere. Um, to balance that in, we're just going to tie that in and I'm literally going to take like a quarter of a centimeter off just to make sure that it's square. Just using the clipper. A little bit of graduation under here we want to get rid of. so I can see. Super cool. Okay. So you can see we've now done the fringe, we've trimmed that. Um, I'll spin Bella around so you can have a quick look in the back. And I'm just gonna do some freehand texturizing. Nothing on top, just underneath. This is purely for growing out. So when it grows out, it doesn't grow out too, um, too heavy on the ends. So I'm gonna use a crocodile scissor and probably about two centimeters in for the first five centimeter section and it's just here around the hairline behind the ears and then we'll just scoop out but not anywhere near that top layer because we want it to almost look so perfect it looks like a wig we want it to fall really perfect this will also give Bella an option if she doesn't want to wear it really sleek she can use some texture spray or actually have a little bit of versatility in the, the way she um, styles the hair um, so because you've seen it um, straight just now um, I'm actually going to use the rocket texture and a little bit of height riser just to give it a little bit of a different look um, rather than that super, super straight, sleek look. And again, this is just through the underneath and the, and the ends, which is why I'm lifting the top hair up. And as the hair underneath falls, I'm taking some weight out and then I'm um, leaving the top alone. You can see we're just going to get that, that sort of textured look underneath. And for me, texture is a feeling, so I like to sort of feel it a little bit lighter. You can still see that it's falling quite heavy on the top, but then underneath there, now we've got texture. But it does create that nice separation, which is cool too. And then I get you to close your eyes again, babe. Just gonna put the tiniest little bit under a fringe. I'll use a comb for this. And this is like breaking one of my rules. I never use texturizing scissors in fringes, but, um, I'm literally putting such a small amount of texture in that I think this is the best way to do it. And again, you can see I'm lifting up that top hair 
texturizing underneath and letting that fall over the top because it's about creating movement underneath and having a bit of separation. So again, she can wear it really heavy and then we've got a little bit of movement in and you can see here it falls nice, but here it's quite heavy. I like that too, just that, that sort of little quirky element, just a bit of separation is quite cool too. Turn the hairdryer on and I just blasted it through just to get that cut hair out. And you can see now that texture that comes through that wasn't there last time. So rocket texture. Um, you gotta be very careful using this because it's very strong and heavy. So I'm gonna spray it onto my hands and I'm gonna rub my hands together and we'll just through the ends, a little bit through the top. And then you can either scrunch it in and let it dry quite um, naturally by itself, or if you need to remove the wetness, you can low heat, low fan. It'll activate it very quickly. So when I'm, what I mean by activate is it actually becomes quite gritty and you actually feel that texture coming through. So the reason why I sprayed it on my hands is because it's, um, one of those products is like not enough, not enough, oops, too much. So better to go on the um, side of caution, otherwise you're gonna have to shampoo it out and start again. Let me spin you around so I can see. A little bit in the fringe, don't forget about that. I think you look like Pulp Fiction, big time. You can just see the, the movement you get underneath there now, see? But we wanna wear it sleek. You can still wear it sleek. A little bit of height riser. I'm actually gonna dry that because it did wet your fringe, didn't it? Doesn't take much to wet it. Spin your back round. Maybe a little bit of air underneath to get a bit of outward movement if you wanna do that. Height riser and then we're done. I like the height riser. Another product we've been using a lot this series. And even on dark hair, you'll see, you don't have to worry about it looking white. Um, sometimes when we use products like this, clients are concerned because of their color that might make their hair look dirty or um, maybe like they've got a dry scalp because it's white, but it doesn't. I love the plumpness that it gives it. So you still have the strength of the ends and the fringe, but you just get that movement through there. It's beautiful. Look good. I think there's a few things we need to think about as hairdressers is first and foremost is all we needed to do to create this haircut was cut two straight lines. Might want to think about that. I think sometimes we overcomplicate things, we forget about those very, very simple shapes that can be beautiful, especially when you combine it with some um, colour like we did. Um, the ColourSync product is just added shine and depth. It's got rid of that faded look and it will fade out nice. And we've spoken about this before that that's important, especially if your clients love change. There's no point using permanent colour if it doesn't need to be permanent. For me, permanent colour only needs to be used when we're colouring grey hair. So far too young for grey hair. We chose a semi-permanent colour. It'll fade out and come summertime here in Australia. Bella wants to go lighter. Um, no damage will be done. Two straight lines, one in the front, one all the way around, texturising scissors, and that's the result. It just goes to show simplicity is beautiful, it's not basic at all. And sometimes we forget about the most simplest uh, form of what we do as hair cutters. Let's spin you around so we can see one last time what that texture did. It almost looks like a piece of paper and I've just like sort of torn it. And that's better than just having it um, solid. It's going to give her far more, um, what do you call it, like options with, with styling. You know, you just want to wear it like behind your ear. You know, you're not going to have that big chunk of hair behind there, and that's that's quite cool too. You look from the side, having that fringe, and then coming down there. Lots of options. Thanks for trusting me. Yeah, I love it. It was a simple one, but very effective. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, do you have Instagram? Yeah. Do you follow me? No, Another yet. one. No, me guys <laughs> follow me on Instagram. Bella doesn't even either. Do you want to shout out your Instagram though? Uh, it's at Bell Dono. So B E Triple L D O N O. Cool. And follow me too, please. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, follow me, I'm serious. Um, and please follow me too. Yes, oh, wait, Jackie, <laughs> too. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you want to know the colour formula and any of the products we use, it's in the bottom of the uh, video in the description. Don't forget to go and follow Matrix also on Instagram. And uh, until next time, from me and Bella, it's bye. <laughs>